Hello, we have a quick announcement to make. We are currently offering a free trial period for any Trove database. Email info at firstsom.com for more information on this great opportunity. Over to Mike. In today's video, we're returning to the South Atlantic. We're going to be featuring Namibia, South Africa, Uruguay, Guyana and Suriname. Now, this is the talk that uh, I gave at the BIOS uh, conference in London in uh, March 2024. This was a conference that was run by both the AAPG and the uh, GESGB. And these are the areas that we're going to be talking about today. Three area overviews. Now, starting with Guyana and Suriname, of course, Guyana, Suriname, a lot of it is about the Starbrook block where Exxon Mobil are the operator. There have been around about 30 discoveries made on this block to date. So here's another video we did quite recently that uh, just looks at the uh, licensing round results. But of late, we've seen that in Suriname, there's been a decision to actually go ahead and develop or jointly develop the Krabdagu and Sapakara discoveries. Now, this is Total Energies and APA, formerly Apache, and uh, they're at the stage of sort of concept selection. Now, um, it's probably uh, almost certainly going to be an FPSO. There is high gas oil ratio. These are quite gassy crudes, and it looks likely that gas reinjection uh, is going to be the initial development scenario but in future well really have to give some consideration to gas export and you can see here here is uh, block 58 the maps actually from geo expo and uh, you can see here's the ages of the various prospects many um, cenozoic um, cretaceous and some jurassic out onto the demerara high now, we're going to take a quick look at the walker. This is walker here. It's in Suriname, and it's located in Block 42. It's a sort of lookalike for the Ranger 1 discovery that was made in the Starbrook block. Now, here is Ranger. It's a carbonate reef play in the northwest. And if we look across to the other side of the Guyana Suriname Basin, and you can see the walker play, very, very similar here on the southeastern side. Now, both four-way dip closures, the sort of carbonate reef plays for Walker. Uh, the expectation, it's around about 250 million barrels of oil equivalent prospective resource. Now, not proven until it's drilled, but, you know, that's the potential size it could be. And it really does look quite similar to the Ranger discovery, which is being appraised. Now, Ranger found 230 foot of stacked high-quality oil-bearing carbonate reservoirs. Uh, we'll wait and see what Walker has to find. So here's a sort of a stylized depositional setting for the Guyana Suriname Basin. And it's in this region here that all the finds in the Starbrook and Quarantine blocks, they've all been down here in these basinal, sort of more distal turbidite Cretaceous plays. But we can see that you know, there are some other plays in here. They've all got hairs. I mean, you know, starting on the right there, we've got, can we get the vertical migration into these lower tertiary marine canyons? And then do we have the seal capacity to trap them? Moving up the slope, we've got a question about the up-dip trapping mechanism with these prograding forsets. You can see that they're pinching out as we go into the basin, but how do we set up a trap up to the shore? One of the concerns as we go shallower here is, of course, with biodegradation, and we did see evidence of that in Jethro and Joe discoveries of a few years ago. Question of whether we can uh, downcharge into these pre-rift rotated fault blocks. But having said that, we've got a massive amount, maybe well over 11 billion barrels of oil found down dip in the recent plays. And if we look uh, towards Tamarejo and uh, the Calcutta oil fields, these are actually right just near the coast, onshore in fact. And uh, we do know that there are oil deposits onshore. And it seems that the oil must have actually migrated up through the sequence and from the deep water, from the mature Kanji formation source rocks, and actually charged these onshore fields. Now, uh, you know, they are significant fields. There's the number of wells on each of these. Uh, Tamarejo is on the right there in Calcutta on the left. You can see huge numbers of wells, 16 and 17 API oils in those fields. This is what the field looks like, and you can see it's a series of barge rigs that have actually been transported in here and cutting these channels through the swampy areas 
to gain access to the drill sites. Now, in terms of the reserves, well, a bit of a checkered history here for Tamborejo. You can see the ultimate recovery is currently listed at around about 200 million barrels of oil. And uh, it has gone sort of up and down through time. And the more recent uh, increases are down to the secondary recovery. You can see that as recently as uh, around about 2010, well, injection started up in 2008, and we've seen that the oil rate has gone up significantly, as has the fluid rate since that time. So, you know, there looks like the reserves are fairly well understood, and you can see quite a significant proportion of that has already been produced. Now, switching to Uruguay. Well, why Uruguay? Well, we're interested because of the conjugate margin. If we look across the way to the Orange Basin in Namibia, all the finds that have been made in the last few years have certainly ignited interest in this region. That's why people are starting to, to get quite excited about uh, the Uruguay offshore region. Now, Uruguay in between Brazil and Argentina, and you can see the limit of the offshore, the economic zone there. And we've got two basins here, the Punta del Este Basin and the Pilatus Basin. And we're going to have a look at a line from Pilatus and also from Punta del Este. That's the location of the lines we'll look at. So starting with Punta del Este, two wells drilled in here, the Lobo and Gaviotin. They drilled on the shelfal area, relatively very, very shallow waters. And they have not drilled into these thick sediments that occur offshore. They did actually get into the Cretaceous, but there's lots of kind of interesting features that we can see within the Cretaceous as, as we go out into the basin more. And then a thick covering of basically tertiary to recent sediments uh, on top of that. So a very wide margin, thick sediments over a, a huge area. Lobo was drilled as a sort of a tilted fault block play. Gaviotin was a, more of a four-way both found Cretaceous sands and shales. Now, the limit of shows was really down to sort of methane fluid inclusion, so not a particularly stellar shows in the region, but, you know, that's uh, really only two of three wells that have been drilled offshore. Here we can see in the Pilatus Basin, here's the line for that. So a much uh, thinner shelf before we drop off into the abyss. But again, we've got these thick sedimentary piles. Now, the Raya 1 well was drilled by Total Energy, and at the time it was the deepest well, deepest water well, at uh, 3,404 metre water depth. And it then went ahead and drilled a further 2,452 metre of sediment, but it only TD'd within the lower tertiary. It never even got into the Cretaceous, and, and that would be very, very deep. But there are certainly some interesting things, again, within the Cretaceous section. So... Um, yeah, one concern, you know, is some of the Cretaceous here, certainly to the southeast, is it very, very deep and very, very distal? Can we actually reach it? The source rocks, well, likely to be very, very deep and hot. And where it's deep and hot, it could also be highly overpressured. It could be quite challenging to drill in uh, some of these regions. And, uh, you know, there may be just a, a more limited sweet spot here than we see in the Namibia offshore basin. But here's a map uh, that was uh, produced by ANCAP, and you can see a series of prospects that have been identified, um, everything from Cenozoic clastics through Cretaceous, uh, clastics and carbonates, and into, indeed, Paleozoic clastics. And it's uh, recently this off one block has actually been the subject of a farming from Chevron, and we'll wait and see what happens there. There should be drilling before too long. Moving to Namibia and South Africa, well, it wasn't so long ago that uh, this is how it all looked in this region. We did have this uh, region here, the Orange Basin. It was seen as being a deeper centre with as much as uh, seven over seven kilometres of sediment in, in parts. So there was some gas known at Kudu and another small gas find here. And then it sort of stretched down and round the corner towards the Bredestorp Basin and the Utanika Basin. Well, you know, these fields offshore Southern Africa here, the Aribi, Oryx and Sable type oil fields, they were well known. But in South Africa, that was all there really was. These small gas fields and oil fields all going back and supplying a gas to liquids plant at, at Mossel Bay. But then, of course, along came, well, 
the Utsunika Basin and the Padavesi Fairway. We've had the Brule Padder and more recently the Leopard Discoveries in that region. And uh, it's recognised that there's a significant band of mature source rocks within this region. Now, one of the reasons that really this area has, has been neglected for so long was because there was this perceived wisdom that, that once you got south of the, the Walvis Ridge, that there was only oxic conditions, that there weren't going to be any significant source rocks present, that there wasn't the anoxic conditions to preserve organic matter. Well, that despite the fact that we had these two gas discoveries in the Orange Basin, and we've had all this oil and gas known in the Bredestorp Basin in uh, South Africa. So it really kind of didn't make any sense, but it's taken only until the last few years and uh, significant discoveries and progress has been made. Now, uh, in terms of the activity in the basin, and on this map here on the left, you can see, to start with, we've got the graft discovery. Then a couple of weeks later, the Venus discovery was announced. Uh, we've had discoveries at Mangeti, Lacedi, Yonker, La Rona. We've had some sort of disappointing results of Cullinan and, and Nara. And of course, we've most recently had the uh, Mapani discoveries uh, with lots more opportunities to be drilled with Chevron farmed in on this block here, Pell 90, and they're looking to spud something in the region of 10 wells, probably starting at the end of 2024. We're still awaiting the drilling by Woodside up here in Pell 87 on this uh, Saturn Superfan. So I like this. This was a graphic that uh, Jamie Vanell's uh, put out in November 2023. Shows where all the discoveries have been to date within the Namibia Orange Basin. But you can see the Orange Basin actually continues a long way to the south and into South African waters. This is the block boundary here, this very, very faint grey line I'm trying to point out here. So the players, uh, Total Energy, Shell and Africa Oil, all looking for many opportunities in here. And likewise, can the play be extended up to the north here with uh, some of these finds or some of these, big, well, not finds, that they uh, haven't been drilled yet. But I'm really, really impatient to see these, uh, these play fairways uh, extended both to the north and indeed to the south. So... Saturn, well, we've talked about this before. I love these lines here. The one on the left is pre-stack time migration, and you can see that the zone of interest here just dipping, dipping all the way off to the west, whereas when this uh, pre-stack depth migration, you can see that you've actually corrected for things like the slow velocity water column here. So in time, it's a lot of time to get the signal through it, but in depth, it's a lot thinner. So the result is that we actually get some uh, dip reversal here. And that's in part why these opportunities uh, map out. So this is the zone uh, that's of interest in the Saturn complex. There's the location map showing where it is here. There was a well here, Moosehead drilled oh, a decade or more ago and uh, had some shows really before any of these major discoveries were made to the south. But it's a huge area. The, the, the Saturn superfan is, well, it's uh, 300 metres thick, they say, but it's only the top 10 metres that count. Has it got hydrocarbonate or not? The area, huge. It's uh, said to be a, a Venus-type place, a late Aptian mound. Watch this space, and we'll be reporting back when that well is actually drilled. So we've got lots and lots of videos. Um, We've got over three hours worth of videos on a variety of subjects uh, in Namibia and uh, likewise for Guyana Suriname, another three hours worth of videos. So yeah, go and take a look and uh, you can watch the story as the exploration of these regions unfurl. So what to look out for in the South Atlantic? What are our wells to watch? Well, this is a sneak preview of a future Trove News video. Why are we putting it out here in sort of March, late March, April time? Well, we're only putting it out into the public domain. It's been with our subscribers for over a quarter now. So uh, if you want the information and you want it when it's most valuable, send us an email. Uh, here's our world map. And I'm only going to be talking about this region here. And if we kind of look at it, you can see these are the wells that we're going to be looking out for through 2024 in this region. Actually, two of them, well, we know about already. Moren uh, 1X, well, that was a discovery for E&I in Cote d'Ivoire, and it's just to the west of the uh, Belain field, which is now on production. 
And of course, the other one that we know about is the Mopani 1X and the Mopani 2X announced as significant light oil discoveries. And as more information becomes known on these, we'll let you know. Now, I could go around and walk around this basin, but what can you say about the region? Well, predominantly the plays on both sides of the Atlantic are Cretaceous turbidite sandstones. There are a couple testing carbonate plays. And there's a sort of roughly equal mix in terms of stratigraphic and structural traps. Mostly, they're all in deep or ultra-deep water. Now, for more details than you're seeing here, you have to subscribe to Trove. Here's an example. This is the well that we're going to be watching. It's actually spudded on the 16th of February 2024. It's in 1,180 metres water depth, and it's a stratigraphic trap. It's the Anhanga. This is what it's targeting here. It's a Petrobras operation. And all these uh, channelized systems within this package here, that's what the seismic looks like. So it is on the top of a high. And there are some geophysical signatures and uh, there's an expression of these fan sands in the Albion and Senamanian Reservoir. There's the block, there's the well in particular here and the location of it. And uh, watch this space. Now, there are other plays in this region. Uh, another one that we've done a video on quite recently, of course, is Sangamar. And go and have a look at that video. It really is quite fascinating. We've got a, a Pro Delta apron here. So this is the location of Sangamar Field. It's actually up on the shelf, not down in the abyss, where we get our deep water uh, turbidite fans, in this case, actually modified by contrarites, it's felt. So well, this is Sangamar here. This is the fan discovery, and it is a very, very significant thickness of oil sands there. Now, Sangamar is Woodside Energy and Petrosen, and it does show that there are other plays in the region. There's the, the video if you want to go and have a look at that. So, in summary, at our Bayos talk, we, we talked about uh, well, it's just a high level introduction to the world of data and ongoing activity. And the world map of oil production, it's evolving very, very quickly. In recent years, we've had the addition of Mozambique, Senegal, Guyana, Suriname, soon to come, and Namibia, not too far behind. They've just found and uncovered and managed to develop these fields. And they are going to be a major boost to the economies of, of these countries. So much more information you'll find in Trove. Anyway, that was the talk that we gave at Beas, and we'll have more out shortly. Thanks for watching the channel. I hope to see you back before too long. Bye for now. And it's a stratigraphic tap, a trap.